Right now, the skies above you are pretty empty, but if electric vertical takeoff and landing or EV toll companies get their way, the skies could look a lot more like this. These companies envisage a future where you and I can travel directly across congested urban cities. The problem is, if the sky was suddenly full of every single air taxi company in development, the airspace might not cope, as a surge of new traffic could overwhelm current air traffic control systems. There's only one airspace. You can't create another universe for another airspace. So now experts are trying to find ways to integrate EV tolls into our airspace without disrupting existing flights. If they don't get it right, air taxis may never truly get off the ground. So what does the future look like? Let me show you. Okay, I've come up to the roof of my office here in London because it's places kind of like this that air taxi companies will want to take off and land from. Companies like Joby, Archer, Whisk and others are pitching a future where you'd be able to request EV tolls on demand, much like you would an Uber. You'd head to your nearest EV toll landing spot, or Vertiport, and after boarding you'd be flown directly to your destination Vertiport, skipping over all of the congested traffic below and saving lots of time. For example, Joby says that a trip from downtown Manhattan to JFK could take just seven minutes in their EV toll versus a 49 minute drive. All of a sudden, at a push of the button, you can make these like really convenient trips. Now, if all of what I've just described sounds a bit like a helicopter, you're kind of right. There are some key differences, but in some ways, EV tolls are set to be like a quieter electric version of a helicopter operating under 3000 feet, which is three times the height of this thing. And that's why initially the FAA and the Civil Aviation Authority here in the UK are planning on treating them similarly as low flying, low density traffic. But as their operations ramp up and their density increases, experts tell me that won't be sustainable. And to find out why, I took a trip to the epicenter of the UK's air traffic control, NATS. NATS manages the UK's airspace by interacting with aircraft that are moving through areas of controlled airspace. See, while the skies above your head may look like a continuous wide open space, air traffic controllers see things a little differently. For them, it's actually a complex three-dimensional map of different regions of airspace, some controlled, some not, and each with its own set of rules. It's the job of air traffic controllers like Fran to help aircraft safely navigate through that airspace by speaking to them. If an aircraft wants to fly in controlled airspace, it has to do certain things. It has to tell us where it wants to go, what it wants to do, what levels it wants to do it at, and it has to talk to us and have our permission to be there. But how it gets there will then depend on how much other air traffic it has to interact with along the way. And deconflicting. And deconflicting those aircraft. Now, even though huge swathes of the US are uncontrolled or Class G airspace, the areas where air taxis are hoping to operate are set to be within dense urban centers and airports, which is often controlled airspace where you do have to contact air traffic control. And while some information can be shared digitally. Every time we need to give an instruction to a pilot that is what we would consider safety critical, so uh, a level change or a heading or a route instruction, we have to say it to the pilot and the pilot has to read it back. Now it could take years for a thriving air taxi industry to emerge, but if and when it does, air traffic controllers could be facing hundreds, even thousands of EV tolls seeking guidance every day. Is there a point in which you say, sorry, we can't accept any more aircraft in this airspace today? Because so we do manage the number of aircraft that come into the airspace and that's based on a lot of different factors. We still have to talk to the pilots a lot and so that's often one of our limiting factors is how much you can actually speak. Okay, cool. So how do you deal with that? How do you create an extra capacity for a future influx of aircraft in an already very busy airspace? What we really require are new technology and new procedures. Elizabeth Chow is part of a team at Nats that's looking at how to integrate EV tolls. We are looking at switching voice communication into more digital forms of communication. The first step is to digitise instructions given out by people like Fran. That digital information could then be shared among all airspace users, so each aircraft knows where the other is headed. The next step is to ensure these EV toll are flying predictable paths by creating virtual roads in the sky. We already do this for conventional aircraft and we're thinking of adding more roads in the sky to integrate EV tolls. For the air taxis, it means that instead of flying in a straight line from A to B, they may have to join their nearest road in the sky. But by mass sharing data and flying along fixed routes, potential conflicts could be predicted and route changes made far in advance, creating more capacity. And then slowly building to, hang on a minute, do we need active control? Or do we elevate the human to a more supervisory role? 
That step would be vital to accommodate air taxi companies' plans to make their EV tolls uncrewed. The FAA's next-gen team and NASA have also been working on a similar plan. Where efficient, they plan on creating EV toll corridors. The aircraft are going to fly a line segment. That line segment is defined. Um, the, the whole method of how we'll communicate those various trajectories and incorporate them along with other data that we may have in the system is exactly what we've been working on. These corridors could also be turned on and off based on the other traffic in the area. Stay tuned though, as the FAA is expected to release its updated plan for EV tolls this summer. So when can we expect to see EV tolls travelling along these roads in the sky? Well, we could be a few years away yet. While Elizabeth told me that the UK expects to see EV tolls in its airspace within the next five years, Joby told me that it could be over a decade until they reach a density that we need to create virtual corridors for them. So at that decade time frame, when we start to get congested or decade and a half, we need to have plans in place. Here's the thing though, it's not just air taxis that airspace handlers are preparing for. Over the past few years, we've seen a huge increase in everything from rocket launches to drone deliveries to electric and hydrogen flights. And as our skies get busier, it's forcing those who manage them to create smarter ways to handle that traffic. We're really gearing up in the FAA to move to what we call an information-centric national airspace environment. And it's gonna be shared situational awareness to a whole range of users, very different from what we've encountered today. So while roads in the sky for air taxis could be years away, the road to building them could help all flights, even today's, run a little smoother.